Hi folks, welcome to Illustrator. So I'm going to teach you some basics of Illustrator and they're very much similar to what we did in InDesign. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since you've been in InDesign, but I think it'll come back to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is say create new. And um, I'm going to use an 11 by 17, so 17 inches wide by 11 high. Orientation is horizontal. And you're going to leave artboard as one for right now, and I'll talk to you more about that as we go on. And uh, we're going to leave all the other presets the way they are. I'm going to say create. Okay, so here's my page, and just like in um, in design, you go to view to show your rulers. So let me show rulers here. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to want you to do are create margins. They don't have an automatic margin, excuse me, margin preset like in InDesign. Um, and the margins are going to be wider because this is an 11 by 17, so you want to make it um, a little bit bigger because it's a bigger size. So I am doing one and a half on the sides and three quarters on the top and bottom, but you can do whatever you choose, okay? So all of my work is going to fall within these guidelines. And I'm giving you an assignment where you're going to um, have some, there's gonna be some flexibility there, but so I'm gonna do an infographic and I'm going to create some favorite cities. So you will have already seen some samples of different types of charts and graphs and different types of infographics to inspire you. But I'm gonna do a pie chart because I'm choosing um, favorite cities. And I think if you think of the side skyline, you know, that goes up, um, that would be a nice way to play off of the, the um, did I say pie chart? I meant bar chart, bar chart. So, I am going to use the rectangle tool, and if you click on the dot here, you get rounded shapes as well as rectangular shapes. And um, avoid the star, everyone likes the star, I'm not sure why. So we're gonna use um, this shape, and I am going to create a bar. And I like to use, um, use my rulers to give me a specific size, so I've got this shape and I'm going to copy it, Command C, paste, and um, and I'm going to do that several times, paste, paste, paste. I'm going to put one here, one here. Okay, that's enough. All right. We have too many. Okay. So I have these boxes that I want to represent my bar chart. So I am going to select them all. And I'm going to use the align um, tool. So notice how up at the top, what's happening on the main menu here changes according to what I'm doing. Um, and I want to align all of these. And these pictures tell you how they're aligning, basically. So this is aligning um, at the bottom. So it's bringing everything to the bottom. If I were to align at the center, it would line them all at the center point, okay? I want them to line to that bottom. And then the other thing I can do is grab all of them, and this will distribute evenly. So if I hit this button, it's going to make them all space out evenly. So I am going to play with the heights here, and I am going to make this my favorite cities. So I have some pictures of some cities that I am going to put in here. So the way that you put photographs in is, is quite different than in Illustrate, excuse me, in InDesign. Um, I start by going to place and finding my photograph and I found some photographs of different cities on Google. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Goodness gracious. This is 
odd for it to take this long. There we go. Okay, so on my desktop, I have put those images. Um, let's see, I've got a lot of images here. So Vegas. So I just hit the button place. And just like in InDesign, I drag to put it in there. Now you see that there's this blue X over there. And in InDesign, I had the two arrows, the black one and the white one, and I could move that picture around inside there. That's not the way it works in this program. The way this program works is you have to paste this image into that window. So I'm going to copy my box here, and I am going to, because I want to keep that consistent width, and I'm going to put it over my image. I'm going to bring it up to this height. So I have this box that is going to be my framework for this picture, and the box has to be on top. If I go up to um, my palette here, I can make it empty so I can see inside of it. I'm going to zoom up in a minute and look at how it's cropped and see if I like it. So that looks okay to me. So I'm going to drag over both of them, or you can hit shift and click both. And the box that you're fitting this into has to be on top. And then I go to object, clipping mask, make. Okay, object, clipping mask, make. And I let it go and it crops it in there. So now once it's in there, see the way I hover over that? That shows me where that box is. So I can sometimes get it to click around, but I have to get, hover over it, right? So I kind of have it there. It's very challenging. So basically, most of the time, if I want to recrop something, I will just, um, unclipping mask it, which means release. So I just hit release, move it where I want it, and then do it again. So the clipping mask that before was black, it becomes um, invisible. You know, it doesn't have any stroke that's showing. So I'm going to do that again. I'm dragging over both of them. After, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, and I didn't finish that, after you have made a clipping mask and released it, that box is still there, but it doesn't have any color or weight to the outline for it, so you won't see it. So that's why I made it black. I'm going to select both of those, go to Object, Clipping Mask again, and Make. So if I do hover and get it just right, I can sometimes use my tool if I click just right, there we go. So I had the white arrow and I clicked it on there and got it to show up. And then when I see that um, X box, that's when I know that I can move it around in there. So I can look at it and see if I want to crop it a little, make it a little off center maybe. Um, and so then I'm going to click the black arrow to set it. Okay. So now I can put my Las Vegas picture in there. And I'm going to copy this again and paste it because I want to make all of these boxes that I'm going to be doing the same size. So very often I just use something sort of as a template. Again, I release. I get rid of this picture. This box is still there. Just need to put that black outline around it, okay? And I'm going to be doing this four times, so I might as well copy one, two, three. So now I've got one, four over here. One, four. Challenged here today. One for here. One for here. And this one is for over here. So I will go and do that with the new pictures for all of these, okay? Um, now I'm going to show you how to work with color. It's very much the same as it is with um, InDesign. The, you know, you can use the picker and change the percentage, and you can also go in here and you can put in 
a number to get it what you want it to be. And you have the outline or the fill, okay? I very often think things look stronger if you don't have an outline around them. So that's how you use the picker. And then there's the swatches, which is very different than in InDesign. So these are swatches that come preloaded. So you've got quite a variety of color there. So you can click and fill any one of these with these lovely colors here. They actually are these really nice intense colors. Okay. Um, I need one more for Las Vegas. Las Vegas should probably be red. That's pretty loud. Um, so that's how I would do the, um, the colors there. Now I'm going to show you how to do type. So type is two different ways. You can take the type tool and drag a box just like we do in InDesign. In Illustrator, this, these words, these fake words show up. It's called lorem ipsum, but all you have to do is write over it with your own words. So I'm gonna say Las Vegas, my capitalization correct, okay? And then I can go um, to get my type, which for me is showing right here. If you don't see any of the menus that you need, just like in InDesign, you go to Window and you can click on it here. So this would be the Type window, okay? So I am going to go and change that typeface to, uh, let's make it three. And I'm going to change the size to, let's make it 24, okay? And then I can change the color of that as well. I can go up here and pick a color. <clears throat> I can select it. I can use the eyedropper, say I wanna keep using the same color palette so I can, didn't really work there. Let me grab this again. Use my eyedropper and select green. It seems to be selecting the, there we go, the outline. And I don't want that outline, I haven't gotten rid of that. So I am going to go, here and whoops, click on the outline and delete that. Okay. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the outline on all of these now that I'm here. So the outline, make that on top and none. Okay. So then I can bring Las Vegas here. Okay. Um, there's another way to make type too. So this way is really good if you have paragraph type. Let me actually let me do command Z, command Z, command Z, command Z, command Z. Whoops, one too many. Um, see the way I have this type here is paragraph type. So if I drag this down or over, it's really nice for um, controlling and having it automatically wrap. The other way that you can add type in InDesign is just in Illustrator is to just take the T tool and click and type. So you don't actually need to have a box. So then I can select that and I can go up here because I'm on the text so it allows me to access the um, different tools that I need for this right away. I'll use Garamond and I'll make it 36 points. And so then that's my other way of adding text. Okay, great.